Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Please stand if you are able at the reading of God's word this morning. As we read 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all own suffering and doctrine or teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall, he, shall they heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. Boy, if there was ever anything that described our day, that's it. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, we love you and we thank you for your goodness to us. Your love, your grace, your mercy so undeserved. As we read and hear your word this morning, I pray that you would be our, our teacher, our speaker this morning. Father God, if we leave here having heard from Pastor Kimball, we will leave here with nothing. But if we leave here having heard from you, by your precious Holy Spirit, we will leave with a life-changing treasure. And that is my desire this morning. We will not hear from the pastor, but that we will hear from you. So please, in Jesus' name, be our speaker this morning. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying to your people here this morning. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to use as a subject seven things we must be faithful to do. Seven things that we must be faithful to do. And may the Lord help me through this time. I am weak in body, but I am strong in spirit. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We must always be faithful to do these seven things. If you're taking notes, I feel sorry for you. Because <laughs> you're going to get writer's cramp this morning. First thing we, we, we must be sure to do, we must be faithful to do, and that is, number one, honor, exalt, cherish, and obey the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The Word of God. This is God's Word. Amen? Amen? This is God's Word. It is our rule book, our law book, if you will, our guidelines that we are to live by. And we must not forget that. We must be faithful to honor, exalt, and cherish the Word of God. Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 to 11 says, The law of God, the law of the Lord, is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. When we keep God's word, we are blessed. 
God's word is a blessing. Psalm chapter 119 verse 97 says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Psalm chapter 1 is about God's word. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen. And he, that man that does that, shall be, he, that, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. God's word should be the center of our lives. Amen? Amen. If God's word is the center of your life, you will be building your life on a rock. The Bible gives a parable in Matthew chapter 7 of the, the two house builders. One built his house on sand, and the other built his house on rock. Well, you know what happened. The one that was built on sand fell apart. The storms came along, the waves hit against the house, and it fell apart. Because it wasn't on a good foundation, but the house that was built on stone, on rock, that is like a man or a woman who builds their life on God's word. Those storms will come along, they will. But when they do, you will not fall apart. You will be founded upon the rock, and you will stand, no matter what you face. Now this is not just an Old Testament teaching, as I just told you from Matthew chapter 7, but also Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and following. Jesus also lifted up the law of God. Some people think that in the New Testament we don't worry about the law of God anymore. Well, that's foolishness, my friends. Why would we want to discard thou shalt not? Murder. Why would we want to discard and not pay any attention to thou shalt not commit adultery or other of the commandments? Jesus said, Think not. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The least. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The word of God is a part of your birthright, my friends. Do not forsake nor despise nor sell your birthright. Amen? If you do, you will have no moral compass. No moral compass. And that's the problem with our society today. We've cast out the Word of God out of the courtrooms. We've cast out the law of God and the Word of God out of the school, out of the classroom. And what do we have? What do we have? In the 1950s, one of the worst offenses at the public schools was passing notes and, and talking in class and things like that. Now it's murder and rape and drugs. Thrown out the word of God, and what has it done for us? It has killed us as a people and as a society. We're losing our, we've lost our moral compass. And we'll most assuredly drift off into the troubled waters of iniquity and degradation and wickedness. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't give away. Don't give up the word of God. Love it. Cherish it. Read it. Own it. Make it yours. Number two. This 
establish a godly order in the home. Got to hear an amen on that. Amen. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. Now this is something you may not hear at just any old church, but we like to read the word of God to our people here. And so we're gonna, I'm going to read it to you. And then when I read it, just think to yourself, does this sound like something? I, I read this to a young couple that was going to get married. Every time someone comes to me and says, we'd like for you to do our wedding, I say, okay, let me just, uh, let's get together and we'll talk about what God's word requires of men and women in a marriage. I want you to know God's word, right? I can't just marry someone. Hey, what's, we want to get married. Okay, I'm married. No, I'm not like that. I want them to know what God's word says. So I read this one time, and you should have seen them. Anyway, this is God's Word. Get your Bible. This is God's Word. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. A happy home is a part of your birthright as well. If you despise your birthright, men, you are not faithful to run, and you are not faithful to run your home according to the blueprint which God has given us. Your home may last, but it won't be a happy, peaceful home, the one that it could be. Do not be slack in this important area. This is something people don't like to hear nowadays, but God has a divine order. There's God. Way up at the top. He's given us his word. We're going to live according to his word and we're going to be happy. Amen? Amen? He made us. He made everything. He knows how things will work best. And so if we follow the instructions, we'll be fine. If we don't, we're going to have trouble. Right. Same with anything. The reason there's so much divorce nowadays is men and women do not do what the Bible says to now, we are naturally selfish. That's something we all are. We're selfish people. If you're a person, you're selfish, okay? But, what we want to do is let God govern our life and let Him live through us. The only good, only good part of me is only what God does through me. I'm not any good. You don't even know how nothing I am. I'm nothing. But when I allow Christ to live through me, when I follow his word, then I'll be happy. And those around me will be happy. There's not wives submitting to their husbands today. There's not husbands loving their wives the way that Jesus loves the church today. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, obey your husbands. Amen. That's God's word. And if we're going to be happy, we're going to obey God's word. And I tell you what, I heard a lady say one time, you know, when a man acts the way he's supposed to and treats me like Jesus treats the church, that is easy for me to obey that man. Amen. Amen. Number three, teach your children. Teach your children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And the wording here is, is like
like, I don't know if you're familiar with any, you know, with cattle and all that, the loading, sh the loading chute. There's a loading chute, and, and you herd the cattle, and the loading chute is what you, you make it to where they can only go through the loading chute. And so they get loaded onto the, to the cattle truck, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the idea. That's the frame of reference that it's talking about. Train up your child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they'll not depart from it. We need to catch them in so where they will go through the right way. There's, there's a broad way that leads to destruction. The Bible says this in Matthew, I think, chapter 7. But there's a narrow way that leads to life everlasting. Which one do you want your child to go through? The broad way or the narrow way? I say the narrow way. Amen. 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 <coughs> but you've got to teach them God's word. And you may teach them everything just right and still, still be disappointed. But I'm telling you what, if you'll stand on this scripture, train up a child in the way that he should go, and you do your part to do that, however they act when they hit that age, whatever it is, however they do, stand on this. You may train them in the Word of God. You may say, this is what the Bible says. They may have grown up believing everything the Bible says. But then they hit that age and they start to doubt. And they want to question things. And they're all of a sudden the smartest person in the world. And you can't tell them anything. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Stand on this scripture. If you've done your part, listen to what it says. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. You've got to stand on that. You've got to trust it. Amen? Amen. When that child that you love so dearly is going down a wrong road, and you know they're going down the wrong road, and they should know they're going down the wrong road, but they go on it anyway. Stand on that scripture. Yeah. Stand on it. Amen. Amen. Teach them God's word. Teach them to love God's word. Teach them to obey their parents. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 and 3 to 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first, com which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Honor thy father and thy mother. This is for life. Amen? This doesn't end when they leave home. This doesn't end when we leave home. We honor our parents still Amen. to this day. Amen? Amen? We honor our parents. I honor my father. My father's dead, but I honor him still today. I think that's yes. the way that it should be. Yes. If people would honor their father and their mother, what a better world this would be. And what more happiness there would be in the world. Number four. Bless your children. I'm moving along. I'm going to get to seven here pretty quick. Number four, bless your children. Can I hear an amen on that? Amen. amen. Right. Numbers chapter 6, verses 23 to 27, it says, On this wise shall ye bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. We put, fathers, we must bless our children. I do this every night. I, I, I recite these words to my children every night. I bless them every night. And I place my hand upon them like this, which one of the words of God is Shaddai. Everything we'll ever need, our all-sufficient one. Place that because this represents that because this is like the Hebrew letter Sheen and I place that on their heads or I towards them I throw it out and I bless them. We must bless our children. Amen. Even Job, his children weren't so good, but he prayed for them every day. The Bible says he prayed for them every day. Number five, get involved with a good. Bible-believing church. Amen. Yeah. And be faithful to that church and to that pastor. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as 
you see the day approaching. Go to church. Churches today are hurting. I have preached in England many, many, many times. And every time I go over there, I see the beautiful, beautiful churches. Some of them are just so beautiful. But they're empty. Some of them aren't even churches anymore. The building's there, but inside there's an art studio. Or there's a discotheque. Or there's a tea room. I'm serious. Wonderful, beautiful churches close their doors all the time because people do not go to church. And I understand there's a lot of churches out there that don't teach God's Word anymore. It's, it's a social thing. It may be a read from the Reader's Digest or whatever. The, the people leave feeling good, but, but there's no substance. There should be substance. Find a good Bible-believing church and be faithful. I'm so pleased that there's some folks here today. They're new in town and they wanted to find it. They're wanting to find a church. And I think that's wonderful. Yes. Amen. Amen. We should be like that. When we travel, we like to find a church too. I'm a preacher and I'm a pastor of this church, but whenever we're traveling, I'm not like, okay, I'm on a holiday today. If it's, <laughs> if it's a Sunday and we're traveling, I like to find a church. And I'll sit there and I'll listen to the preacher and I'll say, Amen, brother. Amen. I mean, if he's preaching the word of God. <laughs> Number six. Win the lost. Evangelize. Spread the gospel. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy 2, uh, 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make proof of thy, full proof of thy ministry. Proverbs 11.30. Are you keeping up with me, Nancy? Yes. Okay. The fruit of the, of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That's right. So it's up to us to know the truth and to love the Lord Jesus Christ and we know we are in Christ. It's up to us to tell others. Amen. 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 Yes. That's why I write articles. That's why we're on YouTube. YouTube, if you're watching by YouTube, you already know this, but YouTube channel is k -Pack Bible Church. YouTube. Amen. Evangelize. And the last one is number seven. Things we must not forget to do. Things we must be faithful to do. The last one, can you guess what it is? Pray. It's last, but it's certainly not least. But I put it last because when in Ephesians chapter six, oh, sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter six, when it's when they're putting when, when he's putting on the whole armor of God, when he says, "Put on the whole armor of God," all the things of this the shield of heaven of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the belt of truth, all that. The last thing he says, "Do all it, do all that in prayer, in prayer." In prayer. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. That means don't give up. Pray and don't give up. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and to not faint. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Pray always. Pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape these, all these things which shall come to pass. And he's talking about the, the end times, the horrible times at the end. Pray, pray, Amen. pray. That ye may be accounted to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, 
continuing, continuing instant in prayer. Amen. Colossians 4, 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Pray and watch with thanksgiving as he answers the prayer. Amen. Amen. 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand, therefore be ye sober and watch unto prayer. James 5, 17, but sorry, James 5, 16, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Ephesians chapter 6, this is what I was talking about where they put on the whole armor of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. And then finally, one of my favorite passages and my father's favorite passage, after 9-11, he, he wore nothing but patriotic ties. He was a pastor as well. And this was his favorite passage of Scripture, and he quoted it often after, especially after 9-11. He quoted the last part of this, but I'm going to read you two, two verses, verse 13 and verse 14 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14. You've heard verse 14 probably, but you may not have heard verse 13. The whole passage goes like this. God is speaking. He says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Now just think about that. God doing all that? Why would he do that? Only one reason would he do that to his people. And that is because his people have been disobedient to him. Amen. God believes in spanking. Yeah. And he spanks us when, we're, when we need it. And he is perfect and knows when we need it. Right. Amen. Amen. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I... Send the command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, Amen. humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Yes, God's people have wicked ways. Amen. It's a shame, but it's true. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So my friends, let us not forget to do these things. We must be faithful to do these seven things. Be faithful to the Lord in all things. Do not despise your birthright. And do not be unfaithful in these things. To not be faithful to build upon these important foundational building stones is to despise our birthright, and we do so to our own peril. So, my friends, let's remember to be faithful. Amen? Amen. 